Okay, so this is where our journey will continue from. Chemistry. This is for NS. If you are doing NS, you're in the right class. Okay, so we did talk about that. We did. We need to perform calculations to do with uh, more calculations. Okay, so we said when you've been given the mass, let's say 24 grams, and then they tell you of uh, of carbon. And then they ask you to say, find the number of moles contained in that sample. How do we find the number of moles? Okay, so we had said, on our periodic table, we have what you call the molar mass. Okay. So if we do check our periodic table, we'll observe that uh, the molar mass is 12 grams per mole of carbon. So, we learned about dimension analysis, which we can use to determine the number of moles for these two. Okay? So, when I say grams per mole, what I mean is, it's more like I'm just dividing by a mole. So, if we want to find the number of moles, we want the number of moles to be on top, so we can swap them. So that we have a more over 12 grams. So we just want to find the number of moles. So we can multiply by the mass. So this is all intentional. You observe that the grams are going to cancel. So you just remain with what? Moles there. Yeah. So that would require you to divide the 24 by the 12. Approximately you get about 2 moles. So this is where you get the formula to say number of moles is just basically mass over what? Molar mass. So dimension analysis helps us to work even without the formula, like I've shown you. And most of uh, the lecturers like this than the formula. Okay. And it's very easy actually because there's no need of you to master formulas. But in case where you... The formula is still okay. No one is going to penalize you. So mass over molar mass. That is how we get to find the number of moles when they've given you the mass. Okay, that was very necessary and very important for us to get to, to look at. Um, we came to talk about the isotopes, guys. Um, what are isotopes? This is a concept that you will know from high school. We said isotopes are basically atoms of the same element with the same what? So same same what? <laughs> so same atomic number or proton number. But different what? With different mass numbers or atomic masses. By that we mean, uh, we can actually get to have an example of carbon-12, carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. So all these have got an atomic number of uh, 6. But if we check the mass numbers of the atomic masses, they are different. So these are called isotopes. Now if you look at the periodic table, you never see a periodic table that is having all the different isotopes present. There is only a sing presentation of a single what? element. So how do they choose what mass number to put on the periodic table? So we came to learn of a new calculation that we basically perform at this level to determine the relative atomic mass. So what you see on the periodic table is the relative atomic mass of the isotopes. So how do they find the relative atomic mass of the isotopes? Okay, so we said they will give you the percentage abundance of the isotopes as well as the atomic mass. So in this case, our formula, the relative atomic mass of our carbon will be its atomic mass for the first one, 
multiply by its percentage abundance again you can add as many isotopes as you have you'll be able to get what your answer now what are the percentage abundances of carbon isotopes we need to know a percentage abundance of the carbon isotopes are carbon isotopes So I'll give you examples. So we have carbon twelve. So carbon twelve, guys, is uh, is highest in terms of abundance. It's ninety-eight point nine percent. Carbon thirteen is one point one percent. Then carbon fourteen, guys, is very very minimal. Very very minimal. So that is like. Uh, 0 0.00 is it one let me check percentage abundance of carbon 14 so it's it's very small actually what i've indicated is even bigger so carbon 14 has got a percentage abundance of uh, 1 by 10 to the power negative 10 percent okay so if you say 1 times 10 to the power negative 10 so it's like you have 0 0.0000001 percent now how small is that value it's very very small it has got no impact on the calculations okay so the way we get to determine Is this it is in this way? So look at our formula. So we have carbon 12 as our first uh, carbon isotope. So that's the atomic mass 12. Percentage abundance we've, we've seen it's 98 point what? 0.9 percent plus carbon 13, which is 1.1 percent. So 1.1 percent. You can also add carbon 14. Now, this value is just too small. It will not make any difference to our answer. But you can add it. You still get the same answer. So, for the sake of uh, time, we'll just consider the first two. So, grab your calculators. Uh, we, we try to perform the calculation and we'll see what we're going to have. What answer are we getting? Just can I bring a calculator there? Twelve points. Okay, thank you. So if you check a predictable, ladies and gentlemen, you find that the answer, the relative atomic mass of uh, your carbon is 12.01. So that's where it comes from. It's not like they just said, no, we're just going to consider carbon 12 and then we ignore carbon 14 and 13. Not necessarily. It was out of the calculations that were performed. And that's why they are able to ask you, they can give you isotopes, they can give you the copper isotopes, they can give you the chlorine isotopes and ask you to find the relative atomic mass. Okay. So we talked about this the other day. I was just trying to go through it in case you are new. And then uh, the other thing that we did talk about uh, is uh, determining the number of particles. Okay, so it is very important that we know how to determine the number of particles. So we work in and with the Avogadro's constant, which is uh, 6.022 by 10 to the power 23. Okay, so the units are per mole. So I'll give us an example. Um, we'll just go by one example. Find the number. Or maybe let's say we can start it as a statement. Given 
Now, if it's two grams of uh, of O3, find one number of them. So when I put ash, I'm putting it means number, number of molecules, and then two number of atoms. So this is a very simple question. It's a very simple question that we would have to learn how to go about it because they can ask you in your chemistry. So how do we go about it? So it is very important, very necessary that before we get to find the number of particles, we need to find the number of moles. Okay. So the Avogadro's constant matches up with whatever you're talking about. So if you're asking about the number of molecules, it becomes 6.022 times 10 to the power 23. So we'll put molecules. Per what? Per more. So per every more, there are that number of molecules. That's what the Avogadro's constant tells us. So all we just have to do is multiply against the number of moles. So that the moles can do what? Can cancel out. So how do you find the number of moles? So we're just from talking about that when we have been given the mass. Not so. We say divide the molar mass into the mass. So our mass is 32 grams. So we'd have to find the relative molecular mass of all three. Now we do know that if we check our periodic table, oxygen is approximately 16. Of course it's 15 point something. But for the sake of just an example, we're going to use 16 there. So 3 by 16 is what? Mm -hmm. 48. What are the units? Grams per mole. So we have our relative molecular mass and then we also have our mass. How do you find the number of moles? We need to divide the two, right? So 48 into the 32. What answer do you get for the number of moles? I don't have to show what I believe we've already talked about determining the number of moles. What are we getting? This is a very simple. Zero point six. So zero point six six. I can add seven. Okay, let me consider four significant figures. Six six seven moles. So at this point, we are able to cancel out the number of uh, moles, right? So our result will just be. We can now multiply the 0 0.667 by the Avogadro's constant so that we now get to find our exact number of molecules. Anyone? You can just repeat that again. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you guys to this topic that I don't like teaching, but it's it's very important. Certain things we learn them by doing them. So 
when you look at the question, uh, we are given uh, the mass. So if we look at the mass, and we compare it against the Avogadro's constant, the mass had two significant figures. The Avogadro's constant had uh, four significant figures. That is uh, 6022. So the way we handle chemistry at this level is uh, you need to consider the least number of significant figures. So in this case, the least number of significant figures are two. That is 32. There are two significant figures. So even our final answer is supposed to be to two significant figures. So 4.015 is supposed to be to two significant figures, which can be what now? So it is going to be 4.0 times 10 to the power 23 molecules. Does that make sense? So if we check here, 1 is less than 5. We can't add the 1 to the 0. So it remains 4.0. So at 0 after decimal point, it is significant. In case you didn't know. So the other question was asking us to find the number of atoms. We found the number of molecules. So for every molecule of the ozone, O3, we have got that number of molecules. <laughs> what, if, what am I saying? That's not the correct explanation there. I'll repeat that. For every 32 gram, there are 4 by 10 to the power 23 ozone molecules that's the correct explanation so in short we have got all three molecules that's what we have now how do you find the number of atoms so you ask yourself to say okay if I look at a single ozone a single ozone molecule. How many oxygen atoms do I have? Anyone to answer that? So there are actually <laughs> there are three atoms of oxygen. So this is a single molecule. Now, you ask yourself a question, okay, how about the 4.0 times 10 to the power 23 molecules? How many should I expect? So, you just multiply the single, the same 3 by the number of the ozone molecules that are present. So, our answer will just be 3 times 4, which will end up to be 12 times 10 to the power 23. Is it 23 or is it 24? Oh, we are now. This is the now the number of atoms, not molecules anymore. So, what is the relationship that is there between the atoms and the molecules? That is how simple the determining the number of particles is when we're dealing with our chemistry. Okay. Then uh, after this, uh, I'd now talked about. Uh, Solution stoichiometry. Okay, so under solution stoichiometry, uh, we get to introduce now dealing with uh, solutions, right? Okay, so what is a solution? We know that a solution is uh, formed after combining a solute and a, so a solvent. These are the two terms that. We are conversant with a solute and a solvent. A solvent, we are very familiar, we know it's usually a liquid. A solute is usually a solute, but solid. Okay, so when you combine the two, you form a solution. Now, solutions are understood when we now begin to study what we call 
concentrations. That's how we can understand solutions. So, concentration is basically the amount of solutes. So, the amount of solutes present in what? In a solution. So that is basically the study of concentration. You are trying to determine how much of the solute is present in a solution. Okay. So the common units of uh, concentrations are how many moles of a solute are present in a given volume of what? Of a solution. This, this is a common form of concentration, which basically takes us to the most common one, which is moles per liter. So when you have moles per liter of a solution, this is basically now gives you what we call the molar concentration, the capital M, molar concentration. So molar concentration is number of moles dissolved in a liter of a solution. The volume is in liters or decimeter cubed. It is very, very simple and straightforward. So at this point, we now know that concentration can be determined as the number of moles over what? The volume because you're looking at how much of the solute is present in the volume and then i did also explain to say we we don't only use moles and liters we can also use moles per kilogram of a solvent so i say this is called molar concentration with a small letter m a case where you're using moles per liter of a solution it is molar concentration which is a common form of concentration that you're going to work with as you get to deal with uh, solutions okay so with this understanding i've brought you the formula for concentration so you realize that you have got the number of moles there right so if you make it a subject the number of moles becomes the product of concentration and what and volume okay that is where we get to start from okay so with this basic introduction we are now ready to get to look at uh, titration okay we are now ready to look at titration redox titrations and the ionic and the balancing of the other things under the astoichiometry so this is just basically an introduction okay so I'll give us an example on titration to just understand basically what I will use neutralization reaction redox. So uh, let's have a reaction between hydrochloric acid and uh, sodium hydroxide. So this reaction between an acid and the base, we have uh, the production of a salt, sodium chloride and also water. Okay. So of course I wouldn't go without explaining the importance of uh, the limiting reagent under the study of stoichiometry. It's very important. It's going to be useful as we proceed in our study of uh, chemistry. Okay. Now, in this question, uh, let's take uh, some values. Let's say we had given you to say you had a two molar concentration of hydrochloric acid. Okay. And then it was uh, titrated against uh, 40 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And then we can say the amount of hydrochloric acid that was required was uh, 30 milliliters. Find the concentration of a sodium hydroxide that was used in the titration. How do you get to answer such a question? So this is where we now start building up from. Okay. So I did talk about the concept of limiting reagents, which if you get to register, I'll basically allow you to access a video on the limiting reagent, the excess reagent, it's very useful under the study of uh, stoichiometry. But in this case, we want to 
undergo or observe what happens as we get to deal with titration. So in this case, the good part is uh, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are in the ratio of 1 to 1. So I'm just from introducing how we get to determine the number of moles. Okay. So we've said the number of moles is given as a product of concentration and volume, right? So if you look at the, the hydrochloric acid, first of all, the concentration is 2 molar concentration, which is moles per liter. And then the volume is 30 milliliters. Now, milliliters cannot be used in this case because we have molar concentration, which is having liters. So we want the liters to go away. So we can either multiply by 10 to the negative 3, or we can divide by 1,000 alternatively, which is the same. I prefer using that. So we have our volume now in liters. So we're able to find the number of moles. The liters will go away. So just punch on the calculator. 2 times 30 is 60. 60 times 10 to the power negative 3. So uh, I can maintain it. Just be 60 times 10 to the power negative 3. Moles. So we have a number of moles of hydrochloric acid. But we are used up in this titration. Okay. So I can even indicate that is the HCl. Using the information that was given. So if you compare HCl against our sodium hydroxide, we we'll observe one thing. These ones are in the ratio of 1 to 1. So what it means when those stoichiometric coefficients that you are seeing there, they are very important and very useful as we get to study this topic. So per every mole of hydrochloric acid, there is a single mole of sodium hydroxide required. So since you found your number of moles of hydrochloric acid to be that, it would mean that since these guys are in the ratio of 1 to 1, you are told that there will be the same, maybe for the sake of a case where you may have different ratios, you would have to put just any variable of your choice using the ratios, you cross and multiply. But in this case, the fact that we have 1 to 1, even if you cross and multiply, you still get the same answer, which will just be 60 by 10 to the power negative 3, not so. Okay, so therefore, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide will be the same with the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid because they are in the ratio of 1 to 1. That is our starting point. Okay, so we need to find now the concentration of sodium hydroxide. We already have the number of moles. So I told you guys to say, concentration can just be given as the number of moles which we found divided by what? the volume, which is 40 milliliters. So 40 milliliters has to be taken to liters by multiplying by 10 to the power negative 3. So, this will just cancel our directory. So, I should just remain with 6 divided by 4, which will give you what? Do we have to waste a lot of time on that? 1.5 molar concentration. Okay, so so this is basically where we get to to start from under chemistry. So if you wish to register and continue with us as we study the chemistry with of, of NS, you can use the link in the in the description to get to register and be able to access other class, classes and also. The upcoming live lessons chemistry okay there's more to this and of course we'll make sure we make it fun as we proceed <laughs>